Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, machine learning, optimization, mechatronics, robotics, etc. In this Control Engineering and Control Theory tutorial we explain how to easily solve the Lyapunov equation by using the Kronecker product. We provide a detailed explanation with Python codes that are given over here. Before I start with explanations, I would like to mention a few things. First of all, I already created a tutorial on this topic, and here is the YouTube video. However, I'm not completely satisfied with this tutorial since my handwriting is not perfect. Consequently, I will redo this tutorial, and this time I created a web page with all the equations that are nicely written. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. First, we provide a background on the Lyapunov equation and Kronecker product. The Lyapunov equation for continuous time systems has the form given by the equation 1. In equation 1, A and Q are known matrices, that is, they are coefficient matrices, and X is the matrix that's unknown, and we want to solve this equation for X. Often, it is assumed that the matrix Q is positive definite, and often the matrix A is a system matrix of a linear dynamical systems, such as the system given by the equation 2. In this equation, x is the state vector and x dot is the first derivative of state. The Lyapunov equation and its solution x are extensively used in control theory and control engineering practice. For example, the Lyapunov equation is important for stability analysis of dynamical systems, control system design, as well as for optimal control. It is important to emphasize that the solution of the Riccati matrix equation can be obtained by solving a series of the Lyapunov equations. Consequently, the Lyapunov equation is very important for designing optimal controllers and for evaluating their stability. And here is the problem that we want to solve. Let's consider this equation. And given the matrices A and Q, our goal is to determine the solution X. Now, here I have to mention a few important things. In a number of scenarios and cases, we are not only searching for any solution of the Lyapunov equation. Often, we are searching for a symmetric positive definite matrix X. However, since this is an introductionary tutorial, we will not add this additional layer of complexity to our problem. In fact, the solution find by the matter that I will present in the sequel will be symmetric and positive definite. This is mainly because the particular Lyapunov equation that we will consider will have a unique solution and this unique solution will always be positive definite symmetric matrix. Next, let's explain the Kronecker product. Let A and B be arbitrary matrices and here the matrix A is not related to the matrix A in our Lyapunov equation. Matrix A is an arbitrary matrix. Then, the Kronecker product is defined by this matrix. A Kronecker B is the matrix C and it's defined like this. We take the scalar value A11 and we multiply the scalar value with the matrix B. Then we take A12, then we multiply with B. Then we take A21 and we multiply with B, and we take A22 and we multiply by B. And as the result, we obtain 4x4 four four matrix shown over here. The definition of the Kronecker product shown over here is given for 2x2 two two matrices. However, we can easily generalize this definition to matrices of arbitrary dimensions. Next, we need to introduce the vectorization operator. The vectorization operator creates a vector out of a matrix by stacking its columns on top of each other. More precisely, let vec be the notation for the vectorization operator. Then we have, we take the matrix A given over here 
and we simply stack the columns of this matrix A on top of each other, and we obtain a column vector. Similarly, vec B is formed by taking the columns of the matrix B and stacking them on top of each other. The vectorization operator and the Kronecker product are related to each other. Namely, let us consider this matrix equation, where A, X, B, and C are arbitrary matrices. And let us apply the vectorization operator to both left-hand and right-hand sides of this equation. Consequently, we obtain the equation 7. Now, it can easily be shown that this formula is valid, and this formula follows from the equation 7. We obtain that vec A X B is B transpose Kronecker A and multiplying vec X, and this gives vec C. This formula is very important since if you want to solve the matrix equation 6 for the matrix X, we can do that by solving this equation. And this equation is very attractive since the vec X enters as a vector. We can simply invert this matrix in order to compute our vec X. Now, let's use everything we learned to solve the Lyapunov equation by using the Kronecker product. Let's consider our original Lyapunov equation and let's apply the VEC operator to both left-hand side and right-hand side of our Lyapunov equation. Since the VEC operator is a linear operator, we obtain from the equation 9 the equation number 10. Here it is. Next, let's apply this formula to our equation given over here. Let's see what happens. First of all, we can write this term as A transpose X times identity. And by applying this formula, we obtain that this term is equal to identity Kronecker A transpose VEC X. Similarly, if we do the same trick for this term, and if we place identity here, and apply this formula given over here, we will obtain that this term is A transpose Kronecker A vec x. Next, let us substitute these two expressions in our equation number 10. And as the result, we obtain the equation number 12. Next, we can call this term as S. Then, this system of equations can be written by the equation number 14. S vec x is minus vec q. Now, this is a matrix, and the dimensions of this matrix are basically sketched over here. This is S. This is our VEC X. And on the right-hand side, we have VEC Q, which is again a vector. And we can simply call this term on the right-hand side as VEC U. What is this? This is a simple linear equation. And under the assumption that the matrix S is invertible, we can actually solve this system for VEC X and we can obtain our final solution. And that's the solution of the Lyapunov equation. This vector can be de-vectorized to obtain the final matrix X, and that's a piece of cake. Over here I wrote a Python script for solving the Lyapunov equation. First we need to import the necessary libraries. I need NumPy libraries since I'm performing vector matrix computations and I need to import also Python control systems toolbox. The Python control systems toolbox is called control and it's usually imported as CT. If you want to install this toolbox, you will simply open a command prompt or an Anaconda terminal and you will type pip install control. However, I'm just using this library in order to construct my matrix A that will correspond to a stable dynamical system. You don't need to use this library. You can simply copy and paste the matrix A that I will form in the sequel of this video. Next, let's see how to compute the Kronecker product in Python. For that purpose, we constructed two matrices, A tests and B tests. Here they are. 
here's A test, and here's B test. In Python, we use this function np.cron to compute the Kronecker product. We specify the first matrix, the second matrix, and let's see the result. Here's our C matrix, and for reference, let's also evaluate our A and B. And let's analyze the result. Obviously, since A11 is 1, the first block over here should be exactly the B matrix, and that's correct. Over here, this block should be matrix B times 2, and that's precisely what's shown over here. Okay, works satisfactory. Next, let's test the vectorization. Over here, I will create a vector out of my A test matrix. I will use the function flatten, and I will use the flatten in column wise order, and then I will finally reshape the result. So let's see what happens over here. Here's my a vectorized and here is A. Obviously the vectorization works perfectly. Next, let's test the devectorization. Now I want to go vice versa. I want to form a matrix out of this vector and to do that I will simply use reshape as specified the matrix dimensions 2 by 2 and as specified the orders. That is, this will be the first column and this will be the second column. This order F tells Python to do that. Let's see the result. Here it is. That's precisely our A test. Okay, now let's construct a linear dynamical system that's stable. For that purpose, I will use this function for from Python Control Systems Toolbox called ZPK. Z stands for zero, P stands for poles, and K stands for gain. This function will construct a transfer function with the pole at one, actually with zero at one, and with the poles minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3, that is, the transfer function will be stable. And consequently, we will have a stable A matrix. And finally, over here, I specify the gain. Let's see our transfer function. Here it is. Okay, let's create a state space model out of this transfer function, and let's print this state space model. Here it is. Here's our A matrix. Now, let's extract that A matrix. And here it is. This is our final A matrix. If you don't want to install this library, you can simply copy and paste this matrix in your code. Now, let's verify that this matrix is actually a stable matrix. Okay, we can do that by computing the eigenvalues of this matrix, and we can see that the eigenvalues are minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and that's precisely the poles given over here. Next, we need to form the right-hand side of our Lyapunov equation. Here is the matrix Q. Let's go back to the video, or actually to the post, and let's find that matrix. Here it is. Okay, now, we need to vectorize our Lyapunov equation. To do that, we need to flatten this matrix Q, that is, we need to compute its vectorized version. And he, here's how we do that. We learned how to do that at the beginning of this video. That's our Q vectorized, and this is our matrix S. So going back to our post, here's our matrix S, and we need to form it in Python. And here's how we do that. We use the Kronecker chronic, function. Here's our identity matrix. Here's A transpose plus a transpose Kronecker identity matrix. And that's precisely what's written over here. Let's continue. Next, let's compute our solution. We compute the solution by simply inverting the matrix S and multiplying the result with Q vectorized. We are using NPy multiply to perform this multiplication. And let's see the result. Here it is. This result is computed by using this formula, 15. And the formula 15 is actually implemented over here. So here is our x vectorized. Now let's de-vectorize x. Here is how we do that. And here is our de-vectorized x. Perfect. It's a symmetric matrix. However, let's verify that this matrix is actually positive definite. 
The easiest way to do that is to compute the eigenvalues. And since the eigenvalues are positive, our solution X is actually a symmetric positive definite matrix. And that's not unexpected, that is, that is quite natural, since there is a theorem saying that if the system is stable, then there exists a unique solution to this equation. However, I'm not going to explain this in this video tutorial in order to make this video tutorial as short as possible. Finally, let's verify that this solution is actually the accurate solution of our Lyapunov equation. To do that, we can basically form the residual. So what is the residual? Here is the residual over here. We can take the right-hand side of our Lyapunov equation, and let me sketch that over here. Here is our Lyapunov equation. Let me just erase this and repeat. So here is the Lyapunov equation. If x is the solution of this equation, the left-hand side should be equal to the right-hand side. This implies that a transpose x plus xa plus q should be equal to zero. That is, to verify the accuracy of our equation, we substitute the computed x for this x over here, and we evaluate this expression. And that's precisely what's happening over here. I compute the left-hand side. Here it is. Here's the left-hand side. And then I add the matrix Q to my left-hand side, and I want to see the result. Here is the result. Left-hand side plus Q, that is, this term over here, is given as this matrix. And I can see that this matrix is almost equal to zero. Its diagonal elements are zero, and I can see that all the diagonal elements are at the order of 10 to minus 15 or 10 to the minus 16, and consequently that's basically the numerical precision, and these are effectively zeros. Consequently, x is the accurate solution of our Lyapunov equation. Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much.